Some AIOs are thin, some are thick, and some try to give you the extra incentive by adding a fan on top of the water block pump combo to give your VRM some additional cooling. See Arctic and their LF3, that little fan can generate some huge temperature differences which extend even to the RAM state. And Silverstone was like, one fan? Nah, do whatever you want, sounds way better. This is the Silverstone Ice Mist 420 featuring not one VRM, not two, VRM fans, but as many as you want until you blow out that fan header. The Ice Mist series exists in the usual form factors ranging from 240 all the way up to 420. And for today's video we will solely focus on the 420 edition. This one comes in the usual AIO type of packaging containing the AIO itself, three non-pre-assembled fans, all the mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, and a whole bunch of cables which you will need for installation. Additionally, we also got a Molex to fan header adapter to keep the pump at next speed, as well as an ARGB controller in case your motherboard doesn't have a 3-pin ARGB header on its own. To get the AIO going on Intel, we need to slide on the Intel bracket onto the water block and screw the corresponding backplate using the corresponding socket screws, which are by the way the same screws found on the new th Iceberg Thermal AIOs and they are like impossible to remove after uh, after installation like with, uh, with a pliers. Not enjoyable at all. Anyway, from here thermal paste and slap the cooler onto your chip. Over on AMD we can use the AMD brackets on the cooler and leave everything as it is by using these hooks that grab onto the original AMD retention brackets. Not necessarily like the most enjoyable installation procedure, but it does the job. Now ignoring these optional hotspot fans here for a minute, because half the video is about them anyway, there are also a few quite interesting quality of life things that Silverstone did on the Ice Mist series, like the fans. Included in the box we will get three of those 140mm 6-pole fans spinning at up to 70-50 RPM whilst pushing up to 93.29 CFM at up to 2.39mm of H2O. And I am not aware that these are sold separately, but they seem like slightly updated versions of Silverstone's Vista fans. Except for some structural frame changes, the speed, motor and connectivity part, they seem almost identical. Or at least the model number of the Vista 140 picture on Silverstone's website is identical to the one on my fans, which is weird because it's not the same fan. Anyway, the cool thing about them is how they are connected. We already had the Silverstone Shock Force, I believe, and there you would start off with a regular 4-pin PVM and 3-pin ARGB connection, and then you use a proprietary connection to daisy-chain it from one fan to the next one. The idea was good, I liked it, but there was a separate cable for power and lighting and the plugs were so small that you would break them relatively quick because you can't grab hold of them. You, you would just pull on the wire and after some like installation attempts you would just break the wire. Now we got a single proprietary plug that has both PVM and ARGB built in and we can use the same cable to split the signal to all three fans whilst hiding it as much as possible by just pressing it against the fan frame. And the cool thing about this is that the plug is now relatively big or a lot bigger than before and we have a little hatch that you can press to release it. Not necessarily easy to grab but considering what I I knew from the shock force this is infinitely better. Also noteworthy is the ARGB. We got some LEDs shining from the center and the light is traveling pretty pretty far and pretty much all the way outwards to the outer frame, so it's, it seems very much fine to me. The radiator in use is slightly thicker than usual at 28 millimeters and a half, but that's mostly due to the thick shroud. Ignoring that one, we are pretty much back to the regular 27 mil radiator with 19 FPI here, so really nothing out of the ordinary. And going out from there, we got 450 millimeter long sleeved tubes, which are adjustable at the water block. Speaking of which, the heart and definitely the most special aspect about this AIO is the water block pump combo. We got a 56 by 56 millimeter copper base with a pump on top that pushes up to 3100 RPM over 3 pin voltage control and a top cap featuring an ARGB Silverstone logo and an ARGB ring going all around that. And this brings us to the special sauce of this cooler. The top cap is not only rotatable to make sure that you always have the Silverstone logo straight, 
which seems unnecessary given that it's a uh, a snowflake and it doesn't matter which orientation it has because it's like symmetrical in eight different directions but you can pop it off revealing this part this is for these these are silverstone imf 70s it's an argb fan upgrade kit they are separately available and they feature a 70 millimeter big fan and they can be popped onto the topless block with the actual top cap then fitting on top of that and these are so goddamn useful and they are handy to use they are great to connect or to control them we need pvm and argb and actually the whole thing is built with this already in mind because with the aio next to the three pin cable we already had an optional four pin pvm plug for that cable all along and what silverstone did in an awesome way here the argb connection to control like this the, the the fan setup at the top is not separate it is actually provided by the already connected pump combo so not only are you able to control these fans separately from 500 all the way up to 2800 rpm but you don't need to add any additional cables if you decide to add these later down the line but the coolest thing about them, they are rotatable by 320 degrees. So just like the top cap, you can adjust these to be above whatever you want within their range. But if one fan isn't enough, just add another one. And another one. And yeah, I, I ran out of fans. Now Silverstone doesn't advertise these to be VRM specific fans, cause they really aren't. They are whatever you want fans. Top VRM, sure. Left side, okay. Wanna cool your RAM? Let's go. And actually, they have a huge impact. We benchmarked these individually using the 320 watts preset on our CPU cooler benchmark machine, just to see how much they could do. And we had three available for this. So we positioned one on the top, left the fan spinning at 50%, then 100, then we added a fan to the left side, then both at 50%, and then both at 100%, because you can't control the fans if you stack them individually of each other. And then we added the last one above the RAM and repeated the same 50% and then 100% fan speed test. And for every fan we added, we saw the temps drop lower and lower and lower. We measured the temps of four different things, VRM1, VRM2, and each RAM stick. For both VRMs, we also got two readouts, VR loop 1 and VR loop 2. Already by installing the first fan, we saw giant results. And funnily enough, it wasn't location bound to the extent that you might think. Adding a single fan to the top at 50% dropped everything from both VRMs to both RAM sticks, even the one that is blocked off by the first one. Making that fan spin at 100% made the difference even bigger, with one of the VRM readouts dropping by 16.4 degrees. Adding the second fan to the left and making both of them spin 50% was a little bit less effective than one fan at max speed, but compared to no fan, the results are huge. Then with both fans spinning at 100% or max, we saw the biggest change yet, with one of the readouts now dropping by 20 degrees. And at this point, the RAM sticks also got some significant cooling boost, where originally the second RAM stick was sitting at 41.2 degrees C above ambient, which, which is fine, by the way, but it now dropped to 34.7. And finally, we added that third fan above the RAM and had all the fans spin at 50%, and at that point, the readouts were all, to, to some extent, comparable to having one fan spin at max speed. But as soon as all three fans were spinning at max speed, we saw the biggest change at 21.3 degrees on the VRM1 readout, and both RAM sticks equalized at 30.5, making almost 12 or close to 11 degrees C from base. Of course, the biggest impact will always be found on the location that you position the fan, but I wanted to share the results of every readout at every step, cause even positioning one fan above, let's say, a VRM, will make that one location benefit the most, sure, but everything around it will have will also have a significant boost. I also did some noise measurements with, with those, and I, I didn't create a graph, 
Not that I didn't want to, but it, you, you just wouldn't see anything. As long as the miniature fence was spinning at 50%, they were sitting at noise floor, so it would be like a straight line. And it, doesn't, it didn't matter if it was one, two or three fans, it was always just noise floor. And uh, so did the pump, by the way. For the noise readouts of, of those here, I had the pump running 100% because it's like the way you would do it like in real life. So that made sense to me and nothing went above noise floor. And the only like noticeable difference came after two fans were spinning at 100%. And then we were talking like 0.3 dB above noise floor. And then with three at max speed, we were hovering at like 0.5 dB above. So it's, it's not meaningful in any way. Of course, if everything else is not running, you will hear them. But if your case has like one fan or two fans, even at 100%, they are going to be unnoticeable thanks to their size probably. So to end my way too long segment, just focusing on those fans, they are optional. They have to be bought separately, which sucks, but they have a hell of an impact if you want to cool things around your CPU. And no, adding more of those will have zero influence on your CPU temperature. I tried. It doesn't change a thing. And now let's get to the actual performance of the whole AIO. We benchmark all of our coolers on top of a 3900K featuring three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. First we benchmark max performance on each of them and then we slowly lower the fan speed in 10% steps while it's also measuring the noise to create a noise to performance curve. For AIOs we keep the pump running at full speed all the time. At 120 watts, aka gaming, the Ice Mist 420 was able to keep the CPU at 27.1 degrees C above ambient, which is an excellent result. At the top of our list, so the cold plate is effective even at lower workloads, but nothing revolutionary here. However, something that is interesting, even at lower workloads, with AIOs of this size and potential performance due to their size, we usually see very weird noise to performance graphs at 120 watts. Not because the AIO is cursed, but because lowering the speed of the fan doesn't have an impact because there just like isn't anything to cool down at that point. For the Silverstone AIO, as I lowered the speed, at least for the first five times, the average temperature of 15 minutes dropped by 0.1 every time. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So, by some miracle, we got a spectacularly clean line. At the top, roughly at the level of a nucleus when normalizing performance and noise, but from there making it very quick to noise floor without a significant loss in temperature. And this led me to the conclusion that this thing is hella optimized. And even if it is just 120 watts, which is a complete joke for an AIO this size, if you want a game on a 14600K or even 14700K, whilst making sure that the AIO stays at noise floor all the goddamn time, this is the way to do it. Anyway, let's get to some actual heat. At 250 watts, the ice mist started to show its worth in the max performance result. At 50.5 degrees C above ambient, it managed to take our first spot outperforming the previously best EK nucleus by a degree and a half. And the corresponding noise to performance graph actually looks even more brutal. Now we are at a point where not even the nucleus stands a chance. And at 320 watts, we got the same result, but with a small twist. At 69.7 degrees C above ambient, the ice mist landed on the first spot, but now it's closer to the second one, which might mean that we are approaching a cold plate limit. But that's just an assumption, and what's not an assumption is the noise performance graph at 320 watts. This is absolutely incredible. Compared to the nucleus in 360 or, new, or even Liquid Freezer 3 for 20, which previously shared the spot of the best noise to performance king at 320 watts, the ice mist is just a different thing. From start to finish, this thing managed to keep the ratio just right, creating an incredibly silent operation even at this type of load. And the joke is, for our 320 watts benchmarks, I allow the CPU to go up to 110 degrees C before I stop the test by setting the temp limit to 115. That way I can uh, let the CPU not thermal throttle. And I do that because otherwise that list would have like three coolers. And let's be honest, Keeping the temps stable at 320 watts is not something that anybody would do all the time. Usually people have like a short burst of performance where, where it, for a very short time it will hit that level and then it cools off immediately. And this test is aimed to find the limits 
but in a permanent basis. So the limits of the limits. No cooling down, just what can it survive forever? And actually, for the very first time, we have a cooler that would have survived the test all the way through, even if I hadn't removed the temp limit. For the first time, all the measurements were below 95 degrees C, which, which would be the actual limit in a regular scenario. Funny. But to summarize the performance, right now it's a best-in-class product. Raw performance, my unit is the best I have seen so far. Maybe just by a bit, but still. Noise 2 performance, absolutely best in class. The only thing that comes close to this is an Liquid Freezer 3 for 20 with fans and Porsche pull. Everything else has just no chance. But it's not just that. I believe that the whole add-on fan system is just amazing. Sure, you need to buy the fan separately and that can kind of suck. You could get one for free with the AIO, that would have been nice, but they are optional. The AIO on its own is already amazing and the fact that you can add these additional cooling devices or cooling components and cool down stuff around your CPU without forcing you to disassemble the whole system because now you need a cable, that was some great thinking I had. And to my own liking, the connection system isn't stupid. No additional cables are necessary, everything can be daisy chained from the water block pump combo and just stacked on top of each other until you create items either the ugliest flower or a drone. And the same goes for the actual fan. The connection system on here is an all-in-one plug, which is great. And so far, the only negative that I am able to find is the fact that this screw is not removable without pliers. And even on the price side, sure, 160 euros right now and here is a lot for a budget AIO, but A, it's not a budget AIO it's a top performer, and B, it's still a joke if you look at the prices of the usual, like, ultra expensive brands. So if you are looking for one of, if not the best AIO right now, the Silverstone Ice Mist 420 should definitely be on your list, no matter what you're trying to cool. And as for my understanding, if I want to cool 320 watts permanently because I am, I don't know, rendering as a fetish, this is a way to go. But okay, at this point, this should be all for my new best in slot. And at this point, a huge thank you to Silverstone for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get an army of those. I want to find out what blows out first. My PVM port or whatever is inside that water block pump combo. Like, I am really eager to find that out. How many can I stack until something blows? Anyway, thank you for watching. And if you want to continue, have a look at this Shock Force fan, which we reviewed a long time ago, but it's like a 140 mil fan, which has 160 mil blades. It's interesting, but hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.